Hello, everyone. This is Read Question with Dr. Jordan Cox. Here we go. Jordan. Jordan. Love it, man. So Dr. Jordan Cox is actually the superintendent of Comac Schools in Long Island. So I'm going to be there coming up in a few days. So Jordan, like, I am pumped to join you all. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, we're pumped to have you here. And yeah. The staff are looking forward to it. Yeah, it, it's uh, I know it's it's actually a couple of days before my birthday. So I'm just giving you a heads up, right? So if you need, you know, presents, I'm good. <laughs> give, me, give me a heads up, right? I don't want... I don't want it to be awkward that I mentioned. I know it's not my birthday, but it's a couple of days before, but that'd be kind of cool. We'll hook you up with some swag. <laughs> All right. I love it. I love it. I actually wear, I wear like, I have a bunch of New York school, uh, you know, uh, merch that I wear when I go running. So like people are like, oh, are you from there? I'm like, nah, I just spoke there one time. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Good to know. So then it's going to have to be along the lines of Under Armour, running gear. Got it. I love it. I'm in. I'm all in. So uh, Jordan is actually superintendent in Comac. Like I said, I'm going to be out there and I, I'm really pumped. And Jordan and I were talking. He's from Long Island. I'm a little bit disappointed. You're not an Islanders fan, but whatever. I grew up a diehard Islanders fan. He's starting to throw some Yankees uh, <laughs> trivia at me as well. But um, one of the things I really appreciate about talking to you before we even started is that really kind of grounded in, you know, really thinking about the relationships that are happening in education, about teachers that had like a significant impact on you. And I know that many of the teachers if not all of them and not, I guess I shouldn't even limit it to teachers like your staff, you know, in general has had such a tremendous impact on so many kids over the years. So when you think of a teacher who had an impact on you, who's someone you think of and why? Oh, I can think of it right away. Mrs. Kaufman, second grade stands out. And, you know, it's kind of like the conversations I have with the teachers that we interview for positions here in the district. When we ask them that question, um, it all goes back to the way that that person made you feel. Mm -hmm. And I remember Mrs. Kaufman, there was also Mrs. Duggan, remember the marble jar on the, on the desk that, you know, at, and if, I don't know if you, everyone remembers that we used to wash the board down with the wet sponge back at the chalkboard. Yeah, um, We're not doing that anymore, but you know, there are things that you, you know, vividly remember. And she made you feel like you were the most important person in that class. And, you know, feels like yesterday, but I'm going back first and second grade. Yeah. And so, you know, it really, that's something that stands out. It's something that I remember. A lot of the classes that you had that relationship with the teacher where you feel like you connected, you do well in those courses. Mm -hmm. So that's a big part of what we talk about here in Comac is the relationships that our teachers have or our staff have with the students in the district. And we've actually taken it a step further um, to talk a little bit about the relationship that students have with their coursework, which is kind of like a little bit more cutting edge. I think for, um, for school districts, which I could tell. No, yeah. I want to know more about that. Tell me more about that. So when you think, when you think about the relationship that a teacher has and we, and you know, something that I've shared with my teachers is that they are the single greatest influence in student learning. And number two is leadership. So you think about how do I impact mm. you know, those relationships and how can we look at things a little bit differently? How can we transform, you know, a traditional educational experience, um, that of what it used to look like. And the place where I landed is the relationship that not only students have with their staff, with the teacher, but the relationship that they have with their coursework. Mm -hmm. So what we've done here in Comac is how do we find ways for students to be able to make meaning of their learning? And to me, it's the way that the relationship they have with, um, with their coursework. And I've kind of broken it into three parts. So in one part, it's you know relevant coursework. Um, another part is internship opportunities, uh, vocational training, um, field trips. And then there's another part, which is really kind of like those real life spaces, which I could talk a little bit about too, that we've created here in Comac, um, sort of on-site authentic learning experiences. So they can take what they're learning in the classroom and apply it to real life situations. I think that the times of students saying, you know, I have to take math, science, English, social studies, world language, what are the graduation requirements that think a little bit differently about how they connect with their coursework. What we've done here in Comac is we've established pathways in different, um, in different, in different ways. We've created uh, a pathway for uh, students who wanna pursue business, students who wanna pursue education, engineering, fine arts. Um, eventually we're gonna have a school of law, uh, a law pathway and as well we have a, a medicine, a health sciences pathway. So I think that when students connect with their coursework and they look at the courses that they take and they say to themselves, this will better prepare me for a career in A, B, and C. They connect with their coursework differently. You know, they feel like they're a part of something bigger than just themselves. I love it. So, um, first of all, Ms. Kaufman, 
you know, shout out there. I, love that too. I didn't want to forget that. So for, for those of you, you know, I mentioned at the, the beginning of the podcast, um, I, I'm actually coming to speak there in, in a few days. And one of the reasons J- Jordan and I actually met literally 20 minutes ago. And instead of like doing a meeting that no one knows about or no one sees, this is, I'm like, Hey, let's record the meeting, you know, let's learn about each other. And now I'm like, Oh, this is like awesome. So I'm learning about you. And I think it's, that's kind of like, we're building kind of the relationship, kind of getting understanding. And one of the things that I'm going to talk about when I'm with you all, and it's something that I'm really passionate about and ties in beautifully is the goal of the work we should be doing is how do we help students find a success in a way, uh, a pathway to success that is meaningful to them. Absolutely. And, and that that ties into what you're talking about beautifully is like knowing the kids you serve, knowing who they are, and then helping them make that connection themselves to what is really meaningful. So this this is why I love doing this. And, you know, hopefully people are listening to this before we get there. And what's beautiful is if they don't, maybe they'll listen after, maybe they'll hate me and they'll be like, I don't, know, I don't hear from this guy anymore. So we'll see. Or maybe they'll hate you. I don't know. Both of us. Neither. Listen, it might be nice for, you know, everyone to hear from someone <laughs> other than just me. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So that, that, that just made me excited because I'm like, yeah, this is totally... You know, if I didn't like your say, I'd be like, okay, next question. But it was actually really good. So I love it. All right. So uh, next question, I think this is beautifully ties into what you kind of mentioned is that how important leadership is to the work that we're actually doing. So my next question is actually, when you think of like an administrator, a principal, um, someone who had an impact on you, whether it was as a kid, as a student, as a colleague, who's like an administrator that you think of and why? I've had, I've had a number of administrators that have had um, an impact on me. And it's hard to pinpoint one of them. The the one that stands out in my mind, you know, he, he it's kind of like my core values connected with his, um, his core value was family, you know, it was all about family. And I think that when we look at, you know, Comac as a, as an educational institution, we, we call it the Comac family. We refer to our, our families in the community as Comac families. But I think that it, it really comes back to sort of those core values. You know, we're, we're in this for a very long time together. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, education, it's, it's a journey. The students are with us for 13 years. Some of the teachers, they're here 30, 40 um, years. And it's that experience that, you know, coming through a school system should not be a dress rehearsal. You know, there's also the experience that you got. There's no, there's no way that 13 years of your life or, you know, your career in education should be a, should be a dress rehearsal for something later on in life. You know, this is our teachers here. This is their passion. This is not a job. It's a career. And, you know, the, the, the students are, you know, we say that every decision we make is in the best interest of our students. That's what we're laser focused on that. So I think that that administrator stands out in my mind because, you know, we kind of wrap our arms around the entire organization here, the entire system as one big family. What's the name? You never gave a name. What's the name? Oh, John Valenti. Give him a shout out. <laughs> is, John, is John Valenti around? I swear I recognize that name. Yeah, it's a, it is a popular name. Um, but if you, if you ask, you know, I think he probably, you know, there's something, my dad, my dad, shout out to him, John Cox. But if I said, you know, I met somebody named John Cox, he said, there's only one John Cox. Everything else is just a cheap imitation. So, (laughs) (laughs) well, Hey, that, that is, uh, you know, that, that, the notion of family, cause the, one of the things that's really important. And we talked about that dress rehearsal. I'm going to talk about that in a second too, is when, I think one of the things that's really important in education is that we push each other, like we push each other to get better, but that only happens when I, when people know you got, I got your back. Right. And that's really important because there's, there's sometimes there's that push, but it's like, but like, you know, if something goes wrong, are you going to support me? Like you're going to go through this. So I think that's, that's a really connected, you know, uh, uh, notion uh, the dress rehearsal thing. One of the things I ask people all the time is if you're, and I, I'm very distinct on the language. If you're top academic students, and I don't say you're smartest kids, because I actually think sometimes our smartest kids are not necessarily the best academically, right? What, what we're measuring necessarily in schools. If your top academic students could get out of school sooner, would they? And if they would, they just see school as a checklist. They're like, just get me out of here so I can go to the next, because they just see it. They don't see it as something that's really meaningful, something that is going to better my life. They just see it as like a checklist to go on to the next thing. And so are we creating that experience where, you know, 
kids want to be there. They want to do it or they just check in the boxes. So they move on to the next. So I, I love that philosophy and it ties in um, beautifully with what I'm going to talk about. All right. So one of the last things I'm going to talk to you, uh, ask you about is this is pretty vulnerable because you're the superintendent, right? And superintendents are always, especially, you know, I know your staff is going to be watching this. It's like, well, the superintendents are kind of like the wizard of Oz. They're all knowing, right? And I don't know if your staff thinks that, but you know, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure some of them do. Some of them are like, nah, <laughs> nah, that ain't him. So you've done a lot of learning, right? I'm sure that if you can go back to your first year of teaching, um, you know, the first year of work, you, there's things you were like, oh, I can't believe I used to do that, right? But if you can go back to that first year, what advice would you give to yourself? Wow, if I could go back to that first year of teaching. I think one of the things about being an administrator is once you're, you come out of the, out of the classroom and you start observing classes, mm -hmm. I think that makes you such a better teacher. You almost think to yourself, man, if I could go back, how much better of a teacher would I be now? after being able to go and walk into some of these superstar classrooms and be able to see all the different things that are taking place in terms of best practice. Um, that is so valuable. We did something uh, a few years back before COVID, we called them instructional rounds or instructional walks. And we had staff from different buildings go down and see, um, you know, even from the high school, and middle school teachers to be able to see what it looks like in an elementary classroom. And believe it or not, some of those things in those classrooms, you know, they would bring back, you know, to their individual buildings. Um, and that was something that we found, you know, very valuable, you know, a few years back to be able to see what it looks like, um, different perspective. You know, when I, when I first became an administrator, uh, my principal at the time, and I was teaching on her staff, she said to me, I'll never forget this. And this just totally lines with, you know, a lot of things that I've written about over the years is that when you become an administrator, you will become so much better of a teacher because you get the best PD that teachers wish they had. You get to see other teachers teach all the time. Absolutely. And that, that was really important to me. But then I became a principal and I said, you know, this is really beneficial, but I'm not teaching. And like, it doesn't really help if I'm becoming a better teacher, but I'm not actually teaching. So how do I actually use my flexibility to move around, see classrooms? And that's one of the things I'll talk about when, I, when I'm with you all is how do you make kind of that incredible teaching that's already going on in your schools more visible so that you're not waiting for that PD day to share it. You can see it all the time and learn from each other. And so I love that you had your administrators kind of going in see what's happening and then spread the messaging and bring it back to school because it doesn't really matter if we see those amazing things, but we don't share them. And I think that's one of the reasons we did it. So Jordan, the more I talk to you, I, like I went, you know, I could have the opposite, but I'm not, I'm like, I'm really excited to join y'all. Cause I like think that um, what I'm going to talk about, obviously what you're already doing in Comac, uh, is amazingly aligned. So I can't wait to talk to you more, but thanks for taking the time um, to shout out the great things that are happening in your school, to shout out your, some of your teachers. And everyone, thank you so much for listening. Uh, I can't wait to, to, to learn more with Jordan. Jordan, you all in Comac. Thank you so much, George. It was a pleasure meeting with you. All right, have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening.